It's been almost three weeks since the Israel-Hamas war sparked concern not only over humanitarian crisis, but over rising economic risks in terms of volatility in energy prices and rising inflationary pressure. Business correspondent Shin Ha-young is here to talk about the economic impact that could play out in the Middle East and beyond. Thanks for joining us, Ha-young. Great to be back, Jungmin. So let's, how is the economy performing these days when it comes to oil prices? Well, since the beginning of the Israel-Hamas conflict, as you know, all eyes have been on global oil prices as that can push up inflation both at home and abroad. So reflecting the concern, global oil prices jumped more than 4% on the third day of the Israel-Hamas conflict conflict, and it was the biggest one-day gain since April 3rd. However, for the past few days, fluctuations have been less significant, even though oil prices rebounded as of Wednesday after prices fell on Tuesday for the third straight session. And this came amid diplomatic efforts from a number of countries to release hostages. And also, Israel has not yet launched a ground invasion due to international pressure alleviating concerns about disruptions in oil supply. And in fact, as Israel and Palestine are not major oil producing nations, experts expect that the impact on global oil prices will be limited. However, it's too early to predict the actual economic impact as it's uncertain how the conflict will unfold. And Bloomberg Economics has examined the possible economic impact under three scenarios. And those are Israel's ground invasion of Gaza, a multi-front war in Gaza where Lebanon and Syria get involved, and lastly, a direct conflict between Israel and Iran. Bloomberg estimates a war between Israel and Iran could push oil prices to $150 a barrel and drop global growth to 1.7 percent. And this is because of Iran's proximity to the Strait of Hormuz, a vital oil trading route. Take a listen. If Iran disrupts oil tankers passing through the Strait of Hormuz or even blocks the strait, it could significantly impact global oil prices. This is because about 30 percent of the volume of the world's total oil consumption passes through that route. And Hyung, is there any concern over the supply chain? Uh, it's been a significant issue when economists talk about the war in Ukraine. That's a good point, Jungmin. Given that both Russia and Ukraine are both um, key producers of energy, raw materials, and even agricultural commodities, concerns about potential disruption in the supply chain were already acknowledged in the early um, stage of the war. But in the case of the Israel-Palestine conflict, the region's contribution to global raw material production is not substantial. And in fact, according to a report from the Korea International Trade Association, Israel and Palestine each account for less than 0.4 percent of South Korea's overall trade, meaning the effect is expected to be insignificant. However, an expert said it's necessary to diversify the supply chain of certain items. Take a listen. South Korea heavily depends on Israel for key items, including bromine and airborne radar for aircraft. With an import dependency exceeding 90 percent for these items, a prolonged Israel-Hamas conflict could pose challenges for South Korea. Therefore, it is crucial to diversify the supply chain to secure alternative suppliers. He added that particularly high-tech industries could face supply chain disruptions as Israel is a hub for this sector. Israel is a hub for advanced industries. There are Intel's chip factories and R&D centers and sales offices of South Korean firms like Samsung and SK Hynix. A prolonged war could potentially disrupt the supply chains in these advanced industries. And what other problems might South Korea face and what response can we expect? Well, in general, when situation globally becomes um, uncertain, there is a tendency for people to show their um, preference for safe haven assets. And in this case, I'm referring to the U.S. dollar. And that would also mean the Korean won depreciating against the greenback. And this is the concern that the Bank of Korea has these days. And despite an unchanged interest rate gap between Seoul and Washington due to the BOK's latest rate freeze, the governor of the bank said that there is a rising concern that a stronger dollar due 
due to the conflict in the Middle East could lead to capital outflows. And meanwhile, to prevent fuel companies from taking advantage of the increased volatility in oil prices, the government decided to strengthen on-site inspections. So I guess we'll have to wait and see how the conflict in the Middle East will develop to see what further economic impact there will be. Right. We will have to wait and see. Thanks for your report, Hyo. My pleasure.